We welcome those that are on live stream, and uh, there is a potential that we, uh, we, we talked about January birthdays, but we have a few more. They might be watching online. Ron Andrus has a birthday, I believe, this week. Karen Coy, now they're down in... Um, they're down in Florida. I don't know that they would be watching, but they might, so happy birthday. And Shirley Stuffelbeam has a birthday uh, here in the next week or so. Uh, so uh, happy birthday to all of you who are watching at home who might have a birthday. Now, open your Bibles quickly to the book of Deuteronomy. That is the fifth book in the, uh, we're going to take the offering at the end. Uh, that is the fifth book in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 19. Have your bulletin handy. Uh, we have, there were some notes that you can write in the bulletin. I have entitled the sermon, Life. What a beautiful choice. Now, notice carefully Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That's why I've entitled the sermon, Life, What a Beautiful Choice. Today is the National Sanctity of Human Life Day. Let me give you some history. On this date, January the 22nd, 1973, Exactly 50 years ago today, the Supreme Court of the United States handed down its famous Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion on demand in the USA. Now, last year we saw that the Supreme Court said uh, no they did some pushback on that. And what they did was they returned that decision to each individual state where, quite frankly, it ought to be in the first place. After all, these are the United States of America. Now, as you recall, there was a lot of pushback and a lot of people were beginning to uh, really rise up and so forth. And the only thing the Supreme Court did at that point was return it to each individual state. President Ronald Reagan on this date, January the 22nd, 1984, which is 39 years ago today, declared that the third Sunday in January as the National Sanctity of Human Life Day. Now, January 1 was a Sunday, and this is technically the fourth, but usually there are uh, only four Sundays, depending on how the calendar works. So, President Ronald Reagan declared the National Sanctity of Human Life Day. To the best of my research and what I was able to uh, come up with, to this point here in America, in the last 50 years, the number of abortions is about 63 million abortions. Can you imagine that? 63 million abortions. Here in 2013, 
Uh, once again, I think I've got this pretty close. There were, there were some things online that uh, I didn't have the time to look at as, as much as I wanted to. But there are some states where uh, abortion has already become illegal and other places where it is in that process. But as of today, these states are essentially abortion-free. Alabama, Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. You will take note that our beloved state is not on that list at all. I, I saw something the other day that really concerned me. A, a individual, I believe it was a, it was a gal, who was a pilot said that if someone in one of those states wanted an abortion and they were going to have to fly to another state, that they would provide them a free flight so that they could go and have an abortion. On Wednesday, January 11, 2023, that is what, 11 days ago, Congress passed the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. This is 11 days ago. And it passed. Several years ago, here at Eastmon High School, I, I was a part of an audience where a gal came to speak on right to life issues. And when she stumbled up on the platform with support, she gave her story. And she was one that 30 years or 35 years ago had survived the abortion process. Obviously, her body was affected dramatically, dramatically, because of this particular survival. There are babies who survive. Not a lot, but it came to a vote in our Congress just 11 days ago, and thank God it passed. 220 to 210. There were a couple that were absent for one reason or another, there are 435 in the U.S. Congress. And this number comes to four, uh, 430. I think there were a couple of people that were absent and a couple of people that wouldn't commit and said that they were present. That's all they would do. I do not intend to make this a political debate. However, I will give you the facts. The facts are, of the 220 that voted to support this Abortion Survivors Protection Act, 219 of them were of a particular political persuasion. And one from the other side. All of those who voted no were from a particular political party. Now, you don't need for me to explain that because you already know what I just said. Those of us who live here in East Wenatchee or Douglas County. We are represented. We were a part of the 8th District for a while and now with reapportionment we've gone back into the 4th District. I am happy to say that our congressmen voted in favor of the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Those of you who live in Chelan County 
or Wenatchee, you are represented in the 8th Congressional District. And your congressperson voted no. For the life of me, I cannot understand how anyone would vote no. Why not say if they survive the abortion, let them live, let them get some medical attention. This reminds us of several years ago when the Congress tried to pass the partial birth abortion ban where baby is partially born they are outside of the mother partially and then they are killed from that point forward that passed in the congress to ban that procedure Twice. Now I'm going back 20, 30 years ago. And the President of these United States voted no on two different occasions. So even though we've seen some good things happening on the pro life front, there is still a long ways to go. One thing that I believe needs to be mentioned is the fact that of all abortions, a hugely disproportionate number of those abortions are in the black community. That's where 50% or nearly 50%, could be a little lower, could be a little higher, of all abortions are in the black community, and the black community represents 12% of the people here in America. But a lot of this abortion debate goes back to a woman by the name of Sangster. Do I have the right person? That is correct, didn't it? Is that correct? Sanger. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Margaret Sanger. Okay? If you, and she's long gone, but if you look at her writings, and she was big in the promotion of abortion, and big in Planned Parenthood, and things of that nature. If you'll read some of that, you will be absolutely appalled. Because earlier in the last century, she called for the elimination completely of inferior people. And that included the entire black race. We're not dealing here with nice people. We're not dealing here with God-fearing people. We're dealing with people who they almost have an obsession with the right to kill the unborn. Now, to this point, we've talked about, I've given you some statistics, I've given you some things that happened here in America, and those are important to understand. What's more important to understand is what does God say? What is God's opinion? I would encourage you to write these things down on your bulletin. Let me get into the heart of it. Number one, here is some Bible teaching. Some. I could stand here and preach until it's dark about all the Bible says about life. We only have a few minutes here. This is some of the biblical teaching. Number one, Jesus came into this world as an embryo. The natural and normal processes the way that you and I came into this world is the same way that Jesus came in to this world. Oh yes, oh yes. Now we understand the virgin birth. We understand that. Jesus Christ is the Savior because he qualifies because of a virgin birth. That is one of the tenets of fundamental Christianity. 
the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to have you read that on your own. Notice it's listed there in your bulletin, Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 45. You'll have to read that as your assignment. You'll have to read that on your own. But it's the story of, a, of the birth of Christ. Mary was chosen of God to deliver the Christ child before she ever knew a man. It's called the virgin birth. Jesus had a mother that was a human and a father who was divine. Divine. That makes him the God-man. All of God with all of the qualities and all of man with all of the qualities with one exception. And that is that Jesus never sinned. He never sinned sinned. The presence of the divine nature kept him from uh, sinning in the human nature. In that story, we find that Mary was chosen of God, and there was another lady, a cousin of hers, by the name of Elizabeth, who was already expecting a child, and that child became John the Baptist. And when she came into the room and said, hey, I just found out that I'm expecting a child, the Bible records for us that John the Baptist in the womb responded. Now, I'm not going to give you the rest of the story because I want you to read it on your own. But point one, Jesus Christ came into this world as an embryo. Number two, each of us is known individually to God. God knows everything about you. God knows who exactly you are. God knows where you came from. God knows where you are today. And God knows where you're going. Because he's God. He's the only one that has that capability. The word of God makes it clear that God knows about every person ever conceived. You'll find, now this one I want you to see, right about the middle of your Bible, you'll find the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And we uh, are proud to say today that we have a father and son here who bear that name, the name of Jeremiah. Now, There are some of us uh, that, um, uh, in conversation, if we happen to say that we had communication, or we talked with Jeremiah, nine chances out of ten, there's a little thing, there's a little tag that goes with that. And it goes like this. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. He's a good friend of mine. That's right. That's right. That's it. That's why his company is called Bullfrog Construction. All right. Now you know the rest of the story. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1 and look at verse 5. Look at verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, look at, now watch this, before I formed thee, In the belly I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. In Psalm 139, and you'll, you'll, you'll see it listed there, the psalmist said, Lord, you have known all about me even before I was ever born. God knew about us because we believe and teach that the Bible says that life begins at the moment of conception. There are no exceptions to that. None. Life begins at conception. 
Each of us is known individually to God. Here's number three. God abhors child sacrifice. One of the things that was very characteristic in the ancient world was a concept of child sacrifice. Not many years ago, and I think many of us would be aware of this, in South America, some archaeologists found the body, the remains of a little girl about 12 years old. And her body was all kind of scrunched down and, and it was wrapped and so forth. And they ran it through a MRI machine to get some images to find out more about it. Not as an infant, but as a young girl of about 12 years old, they found that she had died of blunt force trauma to the head. In other words, she had been sacrificed. Some big, strong, powerful men took a mallet and beat her to death to satisfy what they thought were their gods. Now go with me again to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, fifth book in the Bible. You know how that goes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You're not laughing at my jokes. Chapter 12, look at verse 31. This is the instruction of God. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. That's child sacrifice. Do you remember that difficult part of the scripture where it talks about the children of Israel coming into the land of promise, coming to the land of Israel? And it's a difficult passage of Scripture because it says that God said, when you come in there, I want you to conquer those people. I want you to conquer them because I want the land that they have to be yours. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into the land. I'll give you the strength. I want you to conquer those people but I want you to kill them. Kill them all. All of them. Men, women, children. Wipe them out. Now we look at that and say, well, why, why would God do something like that? There are a couple of primary reasons. Number one, because God didn't want the children of Israel affected by the evil gods and evil religions of those people. And secondly, as a part of that religion, many of them were involved in child sacrifice. Now, uh, this is hardball, and, but I have to say it. There was a God that was worshipped by the name of Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H. You can, you can look that up. The god of Moloch was an idol with the arms extended, a metal image. They would heat up the hands and arms of that idol, hot, molten, metal, and take a child from this big to this big or whatever and place that child on those molten hands. God said, 
I want that type of person and those type of people eliminated from the earth. And may I ask you a question today? All of what we know about abortion in the womb, is it not a strong parallel to taking that infant that is born and placing them on molten hot metal hands? God abhors child sacrifice. My opinion may matter. Your opinion may matter. What prevails is the opinion of the Almighty. The Almighty is for life. He created life. This book says if you take a life, if you murder someone, then by, there should be a process of legality. Okay? We understand that. You don't go around taking life. You don't have the right to do that. God gives life. God takes life. God is very zealous about this concept of human life. And God is very... God is very interested in what takes place here in our country. God cannot bless the murder and the slaughter of the unborn. Once in a while in ministry you come up with some experiences that are very uh, very different, and you remember them for a long time. I remember a gal coming and visiting with Darla and I, and her mother had kind of forced the issue. And as she sat in our backyard, she looked at us with the most agonizing look I have ever seen and said, these words. Can't you hear my baby crying? Not a lot you can say. You can love them. You can tell them that God forgives. You can tell them that that child is in the presence of Christ. I believe that when, when a child is aborted, that is a living soul. And their life is taken, where are they? Heaven's a beautiful place, isn't it? Beautiful place. With a crowd this size, there may be somebody here that has had an abortion. And my friend, if you have, let me say, there is forgiveness in the hands of a loving and just and merciful God. Go to God, confess it, and move on. Move on. Move on with your life. We have had a lot of people through the years who have been victimized. There are two victims. First is the child or the fetus, and the second is the mother. That's why we support an organization like this. That's why we believe, we're not just pro-birth and say, have your baby, that's what the Bible says, and then drop them. No, don't drop them. Encourage them to have the child and offer them services before, during, and after. We should pray about that every day of our lives. By the way, we put our, as a Bethel Baptist Church, we put ourselves on the line. We support this organization monthly from our missions budget. $250 goes every month automatically to Life Choices to help them, and they are helping others, and they're helping us because we're not equipped to do it, but they are. One final scripture, Matthew chapter 19. Please look at this one. 
The rest of them you can look up, study on your own. Matthew chapter 19. Here's a very beautiful passage of Scripture. In verse 13. Then were brought unto him, that's Jesus, little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Suffer, allow, little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Jesus believes in life. Jesus believes in children. In children. Well, this needed to be said, and we don't talk about it every Sunday, obviously, but we talk about it today. If there, you say, what should I do? Number one, you should pray. Pray for your country. <clears throat> pray for your country. Those who continue to support it, without exception. You have to get to the point where you ask the hard questions. What right do they have to determine who lives and who doesn't? Especially when God is for life. Now, as I conclude the sermon, let me say this today, that it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter what you've done, whether you've had an abortion, whether you did this, whether you did that. Sin is sin is sin is sin. And all of it is sinful and all of it will damn your soul. And all of it can be forgiven through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The song says, I'm so glad the blood still reaches deeper than the stain." has gone. After this service, if you say, I'm not a Christian, or you have something you want to pray about, our deacons will be available. We have one here today. And if he stays awake, and uh, we'll, uh, he'll be in that conference room over there to talk to you, to visit with you, or uh, whatever is on your mind. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for it, the fact that it is so clear Thank you, Father, that you believe in life. Thank you, Father, that each one of us here today, our mother believed in life, and they brought us into this world. Father, we ask your blessing on our country today. We ask, Father, your forgiveness upon our land for this horrible, awful stain and Father, may there continue to be some progress in the right direction about the subject of life. Bless these thoughts to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name.